presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. How awesome is the sight, a radiant king of light. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. Be still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. He comes to cleanse and heal to minister his grace. No work too hard for him. In faith receive from him. Be still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. Be still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. Give peace, O Lord, to those who wait for you, that your prophets be found true. Hear the prayers of your people and the whole of your church. Welcome in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Ever so welcome to our Mass, especially when the sun doth shine. I believe we're going to have a heat wave for a day and a half. Well, our readings at Mass today, they're very much as they usually are, but it's centered very much around um, forgiveness, um, especially when we get kind of worked up and, and it gets people sort of hot under the collar and the the porcupine bit, bing, sort of begins to sneak out of us. Somehow or other, the good Lord spoke an awful lot about forgiveness, um, which is fair enough. <laughs> um, but it's, so it's no surprise that we, 
we get it uh, quite a bit at some of Mass on Sundays. That especially when times as, are, as they are and come tomorrow and how that's going to impact on, on us all, it's, it isn't going to be easy and it is going to kind of get people, well, well, people will get upset and, and get annoyed and frustrated, not necessarily with ourselves, but with other people. And So the, the readings have, I think, come at the right time to help us to have that sense of compassion and also um, to be able to acknowledge we all need forgiveness, which we do. So as we gather together for a moment, we do what the Lord wants us to do. We ask for his pardon and peace for our own faults and failings and ask God for that deep grace to be able to not bear resentment or, or to kind of let the, the anger stalk up. Lord, we are here, and you forgive all our guilt. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to heal the ills of our souls and minds and hearts. Christ, have mercy. And Lord, you are compassionate, full of pity for your people. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us and pardon and forgive us all our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our minds, heart, and soul. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading today is from the book of Ecclesiasticus, um, part of what they call the wisdom, wisdom literature in the Old Testament. Kind of full of all wise sayings and stuff, you know. Though um, some of them are pretty strong, having said that. Resentment and anger, these are foul things. Are both, and both are found with the sinner. He who extracts vengeance will experience the vengeance of the Lord, who keeps strict account of sin. So forgive your neighbor the hurt he does you. And when you pray, your sins will be forgiven. If a person nurses anger against another, can he then demand compassion from the Lord God? Showing no pity for a person like himself, can he then plead for his own sins? Mere creatures of flesh, he cherishes resentment. Who will forgive him his sins? Remember the last things and stop hating. Remember disillusion and death and live by the commandments. Remember the commandments. And do not bear your neighbor ill will. Remember the covenant of the Most High and overlook the offense. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm, beautiful psalm, and uh, the response. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger rich in mercy my soul give thanks to the lord all my being bless his holy name my soul give thanks to the lord and never forget all his blessings the lord is compassion and love slow to anger rich in mercy it is he who forgives all your guilt who heals every one of your ills who redeems your life from the grave who crowns you with love and compassion the Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger, rich in mercy. His wrath will come to an end. He will not be angry forever. He does not treat us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our faults. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger, rich in mercy. 
For as far as the heavens are high above the earth, so strong is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our sins. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger, rich in mercy. And a little extract from St. Paul to the Romans. The life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So that alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life, so that he might be the Lord both of the dead and of the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our gospel acclamation, Alleluia, Alleluia. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You have the message of eternal life. Alleluia. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter went up to Jesus and said, Lord, how often must I forgive my brother if he wrongs me? As often as seven times? Jesus answered, not seven, I tell you, but 77 times. And so the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who decided to settle his accounts with his servants. When the day of reckoning began, they brought him a man who owed 10,000 talents, but he had no means of paying. So the master gave orders that he should be sold together with his wife and his children and all his possessions till he could meet the debt. At this the servant threw himself down at his master's feet. Give me time, he said, give me time, and I will pay the whole sum. And the servant's master felt so sorry for him that he let him go and cancelled all the debt. Now, as this servant went out, he happened to meet one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he seized him by the throat and began to throttle him. Pay me what you owe me, he said. His fellow servant fell at his feet and implored him, saying, Give me time and I will pay you. But the other would not agree. On the contrary, he had him thrown into prison till he would pay the debt. Well, all his fellow servants were deeply distressed when they saw what had happened, and they went to the king and reported the whole affair to him. Then the master sent for him. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all that debt of yours when you appealed to me. Were you not bound then to have pity on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? And in his anger, the master handed him over to the torturers till he should pay all his debt. And that is how my heavenly father will deal with you unless you each forgive your brother and sister from your heart. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Peter must have been having a bad day, you reckon, there. Obviously, whether it was actually his actual brother or somebody or other. And he's, he must have tread on his corn yet again and again and again. And he thought, seven times. That's the, that's the magic number in Israel. You know, it's like seven days of creation. Kind of means like whatever, huge number. And Jesus says, oh, no, no, no. How about 77 times? Which is like, there isn't such a number. Jesus was fantastic at telling stories. 
and that's and he used he often used what you just call exaggeration to make a point i reckon he frequently um had the people he talked to kind of big smiles for sure and rocking in the aisles as well you know um and he'd say things like it's easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than a rich man to get to heaven you think well, well how's camel's just a great big thick um rope by the way not a thing we umps on <laughs> but like they must have thought no you can't do that and then i said you know i speak it was, it, in the gospel on the day it was saying you know it's, it's dead easy to pick faults in other people you know i said well we all have faults you know i'll take that splinter out of your eye and he says how about taking the plank out of your own eye you kind of mean you imagine the sort of plank but this story today was probably one of his best for exaggerations um I know I have a very good friend who's also a priest and um, he's a bit older than me and he's Irish and he's helped a lot here. Now I'm not giving you any clues to who that is um, but when Joel usually tells a story um, he tends to exaggerate a little bit and if it's anything to do with numbers when, bless him, I usually half it and then I half it again and half it again and I reckon I'll get somewhere near what's actually the story's all about. But Jesus was cracking with this one today. Um, a talent, um, sort of like a gold bar, really, in, in his day. They reckon a talent today will be worth about £200,000, all right? Now, somebody won, who's a millionaire, didn't they, last week? And he didn't have a calculator to do questions, so I just wonder whether this one might beat him. So he owed 10,000 talents. So that would be 200,000 pounds times 10,000. Now, you work that out in your head. It's a lot, isn't it? It's crackers. You know, the people must have thought, this is madness, you know. And then, he appear, and he cancels the whole of the debt. You think, come on. But he did. And then the parallel was, then he tried to squeeze his, hit at somebody else out of 100 denarii, which would be about a month's pay. Okay, I think that would be the equivalent. Oh, a chunk of money, but nothing like 10,000 times 200,000. And somehow or other, the good Lord was saying, you know, this is, this is about the sort of the forgiveness that God deals with us. I suppose... If we were to try and, not that you could any, do the maths, but all our faults and failings and things we didn't do and should have done and whatever, in a day, okay, not that we're ever likely to add them all up, but then you multiply that by seven for a week and then 52 for a year and then multiply that by however, however many years you're, we're all been alive for. We might be getting on towards that number in the gospel here. And what does the Lord do? He forgives all our sins. So it is this beautiful echoes of that. Um, I think the psalm really. God does not treat us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our faults. And that lovely line there, as far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our sins. Powerful stuff, you know? Um, to have compassion, especially in these days as well. Well, a thought or two. We bring all our prayers to Almighty God today. Uh, we pray for all our families. We ask God's tender care upon us all. We ask God to fill us with that kind of compassion and forgiveness that families especially need in life and schools as well, you know. Um, so we ask for that in sort of, especially from tomorrow onwards when it is clearly going to get a lot harder. So we ask God for his strength and encouragement to be able to put what we've heard into practice in the, the week and the months and years to come. And we'll ask the good lady to strengthen all our prayers with 
joining her today. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We'll offer all our prayers along with the bread and wine to Almighty God. Um, and we've got Alan and on the organ and Sandra way back in the far back of the, the choir loft up there and uh, to be able to have a little real music uh, in our church for once now. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. And Lord, be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. And Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from all my sins. We pray, my friends, that our prayer and sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with kindness upon our prayers, O Lord, and in your love accept them, your servants' offerings, and what each has offered to the honour of your name may serve for the salvation of us all. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and the poor, for the sick and the sinner. And he became a neighbor to those oppressed and afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that we, you care for all your sons and daughters. And with the angels and saints, we bless your name and sing the hymn of glory as without end, as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, and he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples and said, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And our mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen. 
Christ will come again. And therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal Easter sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, our Bishop John, and all the clergy, and the entire people you've made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire us in words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, and that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us that when our earthly pilgrimage is done, we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, St. Alban, and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And so we share our great family prayer in the words of the good Lord as together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever, and for peace. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the good Lord be always with you and with your spirit. And as best we can, we, we offer God's peace for a little sign. Peace, everyone. Peace and God bless. Peace and God bless. And Lamb of God, you take away the sins. the mingling of the body and blood of the Lord from eternal life to all who receive him. And behold Jesus, the Lord, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Amen.
the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, you will comfort me, you are with me, you will comfort me. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. And our prayer of spiritual communion for all the good folk who are and are watching in um, on the telly live today. So my dear Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament today. And I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my heart and soul now. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart and soul. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. How precious is your mercy, O Lord. The children of men seek shelter in the shadow of your wings. And let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, take possession of our minds and hearts and bodies so that its effects are not our own desires. May always prevail within us 
and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Again, bless you all for being with us today, um, whether physically or sort of whatever it is when people are watching on the telly. Um, you're all so welcome here today. Bless you. Uh, just from the, the newsletter, um, we've looked at all the instructions from, that we've got from Boris for tomorrow onwards. It won't affect uh, coming to Mass at all. Um, it's still fine. Um, whether it's weekday or Sundays, um, the regulations haven't changed um, from church point of view at all. So that's, that's good to know. So that's, that's okay. So we've got the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 12 o'clock masses in different churches and the normal masses that we have here on Saturday night and Sunday. I mentioned the news about confession. Some people have been asking about confession. So, uh, the problem the bishops have said with the confessional box is that if somebody went in and we'd have to sort of sanitize the whole place afterwards. So they said just give up on that and if people want confession then um, give us a shout and I'll somehow or other sort of before mass or after mass we'll sort of find a corner in church and, and we'll sort you out so it's about the um, best I can offer in a way at the moment so the St. Vincent de Paul still ma managing to meet with the telephones and zooms and still doing lots of good work they do have a, an annual appeal in September so if um, you can spare something to put in an envelope for the St. Vincent de Paul and their good work um, then that will be very gratefully received our charity for Cambodia, the Action for Cambodia, um, was going to have a meeting this Thursday up at um, Good Shepherd Hall. Anyway, they don't particularly want to be fined a thousand pound a piece for coming, so <laughs> we'll have to scrub that for the time being. And um, but still, people are doing good, caring work. So uh, in that charity area, um, so that that's fine. So um, that'll that'll happen when it will be able to happen. Somebody the other day said to me, "What we're going to do about midnight mass, Father?" Oh no! Midnight mass and no, no carol singing. Well, we can have music like we've got today, and um, I don't know. Anyway, whatever. But my thought was at the moment is that, like the masses at uh, Christmas, it's I somehow rather want to try and ensure that, you, like your good folk yourselves who come, kind of definitely get a seat, you know. And sometimes you, other members of your families come along. I'm aware of that as well. So I just want to kind of ensure that um, you kind of get you kind of get get a place somewhere to sit. So we're going to see um, Pete somehow or other. We're going to get a plan of the church, and when that kind of work out what masses we'll actually have on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, um, we'll kind of let you know first, and then we can organise that family bubbles can sit together, and it will actually be able to allow more people to sit in church than just because you're not liking ones or twos, you know, we can, you can sort of be at least, in, at least in sixes, I hope, anyway. So that's the plan, all right. So it's a bit like watch this space. Don't tell anybody, you know, we'll just sort of keep it to ourselves so that um, when it comes to Christmas, um, you will definitely, whichever mass you decide to come to, you'll actually have a seat and it will be your seat on, any, on a particular bench, okay. So that's the plan. <laughs> All the plans of mice and men. Well, I hope you have a lovely few days and that you bask in the sunshine for the next few days and don't work too hard. The Lord be with you. And may the good Lord bless you all and your families and keep you in God's love and care in this coming week. In the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our mass is ended. Let us go and stay in the love of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. Thank you.